Hi, everyone, and welcome to the End of Life Journey and Beyond, The Sands of Time. My name is Lisa Strauss Lawrence, and I'm a bereavement specialist. And hi, Susan. Always hi, good to Lisa. see you. Always good to see you as well. My name is Susan Caperso, End of Life doula and legacy specialist. And today we're here to talk about a, a pretty tough subject, um, a cancer diagnosis. When you get this diagnosis, how do you feel? What do you say? What do you do? These are things that we're clueless about because it, they've never happened to us before, right? So today we're offering a couple tips and some guidance and a little support in the coming, what's to come, the coming days, the coming weeks, the coming months. Okay. And, and Lisa's got quite a bit of experience in this. So I'd like to, well, unfortunately, you know, yesterday was the uh, breast cancer strides walk at mm -hmm. Jones beach and, First. and um, the walk always has thousands of people. Um, and I've walked it before and I've walked with this sign that shows, I believe 16 of my friends who have had breast cancer, 16. Um, wow. And that's a huge number. It is. Uh, only three have died from it and everyone else has survived uh, and gone through treatments. And, and sometimes it's really just, uh, you know, a, a small tumor and it's gone and it's going to be radiation or it's going to be some other things, um, but they're fine. They're all fine. It's, it's really amazing how many people. And but then, it doesn't matter because when you hear that diagnosis, they all <laughs> feel the same way. That's right. That's right. And then I have a friend who is diagnosed with lung cancer. Um, and so we're dealing with that. And my cousin had ovarian cancer, and that's two years ago already. And another friend also had ovarian cancer. So what's interesting about this is that years and years ago, the C word, that's what it was called, the C word, would never be discussed. You know, if you said it, that was it, you know, death. And that's not true anymore that obviously there are some cancers that are harder to treat than others. My husband died of pancreatic cancer. I knew that was one of the four worst cancers. I knew that. Now that doesn't mean that in the future it, will, it won't be different, but you know, at this point, that's one of them. So I just thought that today we would talk about coping and living with cancer because you know everybody is different. Every treatment is different. And you want to figure out how to live. Yeah. And get it's through. Fear, right? This fear, fear of the unknown. Absolutely. When Absolutely. it comes to either a diagnosis, when it comes to anything in life. Yeah. You know, we're afraid of so many things and not knowing. And at least if you learn, if you learn about it a little bit, and it, please try and read some books. There's a lot of information out on the internet. But the more you know, the less fear you may have. So I want to start with the facts. So once your diagnosis is there, getting the facts about it is so important because then you're operating with what's going on. You know, so what, you know, what kind of cancer do I have? Where's the cancer? Has it spread? The more information, I know how scary it is because I was there with my husband right next to him. Um, but the more you will feel that that this situation that is so hard to control is a little bit more, you know, in facts. Right. And so, it's all about being in, in control. That's right. Right. We lose control and that's where the fear comes in. So it's about being in control. And the more you know, mm -hmm. the more now you can go into your doctor's office and ask the right questions yes. and write things down, keep a little notebook with you and write things down, write down the questions that you want to ask Monday, because you know, you have a Friday's a Friday appointment. Yeah. You may forget it by Friday. So, and actually taking somebody with you is really important of course, um, because it's really hard to process and to think about stuff while this person's talking. And there you are personally being told things. So really helpful to have somebody with you. Definitely. And you don't have to hire somebody. It doesn't yes. have to be a, um, a, it can be a patient advocate. Yeah. There are many yeah. services on Long Island that I know of um, that offer a patient advocate to go with you. Pulse, 
I'm yes. on the Pulse Center for Safety and Education. So we have advocates that will go with you to appointments, but it could be just a neighbor or a friend and or give them a little notebook and a pen, literally, not just to listen, yes, but to jot things down. So when you get home, you can review and you'll have all the facts because again, yes. and like Lisa said, things go through one ear and out the other. Absolutely. We think we'll remember it, but we don't. Yes. A lot of emotion then. Oh yeah, plenty. So the lines of communication, you let's just emphasize how important it is to have honest two-way communication with your loved ones, with your healthcare providers, with friends and people who care about you. Because believe me, you will feel more alone if you feel that they're not communicating or they're not there for you, or they're even trying to protect you by not telling you things. And that's horrible because then you feel you know, hey, you know, what about me? Like, what's going on with me? So showing real emotions, that really supports people. And I know people think that's worse that way, but it is not. It's so important to try and be open. Because you do, you believe that it, that it's going to, it will be harder. Yes. And that by not speaking about it and pushing things under the carpet, it will be a little bit easier for them. You're worried about them, right. but it, it won't be. In the long run, you know, lack of communication and not having that honesty with them will hurt them more. Absolutely. Let's talk a little bit about physical changes because uh, there may be physical changes from your body because of the cancer diagnosis or anything with treatment. And so you need to prepare a little bit and understand a little bit about what the consequences will be. Ask your healthcare provider what might change. Uh, medicines make you lose your hair or weight and things like that. It's really important that you get information and you get advice. There's a lot of advice about makeup and wigs and all kinds of other things. Um, and even insurance. Insurance might pay for things that you didn't even realize. So that's important as well. Um, and now just add joining a, a cancer support group. We talked about support groups last week. Cancer support groups at least make you feel like you're not alone and that members really understand and may even have tips. Oh, when I had this, I did this. And I'll give you an example. Um, I, in anticipation of some of the chemo of, of this friend, I sent a book called Nutrition uh, while, while Chemo or something like that it's called. And it's a really good book because it deals with the different aspects of, um, of reactions of chemo, like when you're nauseous or diarrhea or things like that. And this actually gives suggestions on what to eat and what to make. And that was very helpful to me with my husband. Um, and so I thought that that might be a helpful thing What as a well. great gift. That's a really great gift. Yeah. 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 Um, and then a healthy lifestyle. If you can... Choose the healthy diet, get enough rest, which is really hard when you're all upset like this. Um, you're trying to get the stress and fatigue of the cancer and its treatment as, as less as possible, which is really hard to say. But I'm going to mention a book that I got from my husband during this. The mind and the body, you know, is like one to one. So I got this book called Fighting Cancer from Within. And it was all about the, the emotional and mental outlook of, your, of how you react and how your body is. And they say, the more positive you are, the more you're helping your body heal. I believe that. I really do believe that. So exercising, activities, yeah. um, all of that is really important for, uh, you know, for, the, for the process. And meditation. Yeah. You know, and if you don't meditate, it's as simple as breathing in and breathing out and sit quietly, sit quietly for five minutes, 10 minutes, 20, if you can, a half hour is great. If you do have a phone and you can jump on YouTube, there's a ton of healing videos that you can meditate to. And they, they're all not, they may not all be for you. But then in between, you find a gem yeah. and you'll say, you know, I do that all the time and I find one and I listen to it for months and months because it really changes how you feel and your attitude and your yes. point of view. Yes. So please try and do that because that will help as well. Yes, absolutely. So family and friends, they want to help. 
And what's hard for them is that they obviously feel helpless and they want to do as much as possible. So we encourage you people who you know to accept the help to um, because and it affects everyone differently. The whole family's affected. Um, and so um, accepting help like meals or chores or other things like that, you know, thank you. You do the same for them. So think in terms of how that's helpful to them as well. And, you know, in addition to you. Because it does help yes. your friends and family. It helps them feel like they're being helpful to you. Think about this. Think of somebody else, a, a good friend down the road with that diagnosis. How do you feel? You want to help. You want to help. And they tell you, no, there's nothing to do. There's mm -hmm. nothing you can do. And here you call your other friend down the other road and say, but all I want to do is help. I, I wish I could do something more. Right. So if they're, if, you know, if somebody wants to help, if they're offering that help, think of something, think of something that they can do to help you, yes. no matter how small it may be, right. because they feel like they're being helpful to you. That's right. That's right. So let's go to goals and priorities. So this is the best time to figure out what's really important in your life. So find the time to do the activities that you, you know, that give you meaning, that is special to you. Uh, look at the calendar, get rid of all the things that don't meet your goals. Sometimes we fill up things and they're really not that important. Uh, be open with your loved ones, share your thoughts and feelings with them because obviously it affects all the relationships um, and it obviously communication can help lower the anxiety and the fear that you know, cancer causes. So that's really important. Um, and the lifestyle, you know, keep your lifestyle, but you may have to be open to changing it. You have to take one day at a time. You can't, first of all, it's a, a roller coaster. And I know that for a fact, I haven't gone through it. So, you know, the treatment might require some time away from work or home. Um, there's other, there's course of medicine, medical devices. I mean, there's a lot going on here. Um, and so you really have to just, you know, um, organize and plan as best you can. Uh, but you also have to be flexible because so much is going to change. And let's go to finances next because it does change your finances. Um, you know, perhaps you're not able to work anymore or perhaps, you know, there's disability. I mean, there's a lot of things going on and that's also scary. Here you are trying to be healthy and now you're worried about your work. And, you know, do I take time away from work? Um, you know, will my insurance pay for treatments? I mean, all this is very overwhelming, very overwhelming. So sit with people who will help you sort this out. You do not have to do all of this alone. Certainly sit with family members or professionals who can plan things out for you as best you can. You know, even do you qualify for disability benefits? By the way, cancer is a diagnosis that you uh, are able to get disability for. And a lot of people don't realize that if you're unable to work. So that's No, important. I'm on the board of the National Aging in Place Council, the Nassau and Suffolk County chapter on Long Island. We are a national organization, but we're here, we're a resource group. So we have 80 members that are background checked and vetted, and we're here for seniors. We're here just for seniors that need some type of resource and don't know where to go or what to do. So if you contact the National Aging in Place Council, we get back to you and we'll find exactly what you need. And if we don't have that person on hand to help, we'll find them for you. And it's a great organization. I brought it up because one of um, our members that are on the board as well, um, Mike, he volunteers for the American Cancer Society. And at our meetings once in a while, you know, he brings that up and he talks about some of the services that they offer. And there are a lot of services and a lot of support groups. And even at, at one time, it was before COVID, so I'm not sure about this particular time right now where we're kind of after COVID, uh, but they supplied wigs if you needed wigs at no cost. Um, they have a whole... Um, team of people that will give you a ride to the doctor if you if you have an appointment and you need a ride 
So services like these are really, really important because some of you that may be listening don't have big families or have a lot of friends and don't know where to turn. So what I'm saying is the vo that the volunteers are out there. You have to research and, and find them, find yeah. them to help. Yes, yes, very good. Um, also, obviously, support groups, even... I, as I said last week, I went to a cancer care support group for people who are caring for their loved ones with cancer. And that's also very helpful. So helpful to the person to speak to other people, even if it's not a group, just speak to other people with the same diagnosis. You can find out a little bit more and maybe there's some information that would be helpful, you know, in some way. I was on a listserv that was worldwide. And people were saying about the different treatments that they were getting for pancreatic cancer. And that gave me more information and some advice about where to go next and what to do next. So I was all the research person. My husband was bury the head in the ground and be an ostrich. And that's how he coped. Yeah. yeah, and I'm the research person too, but I do know how valuable and how important it is because it gives you a sense of power. Yes, and a sense of independence when you know a little bit more about the stages and what you'll be going through and listening to videos like ours. That's right. Right. And I'm sure we're just one of many. There, there sure. are probably many speakers out there that help with this, this yes. type of thing and the emotions that you'll be going through. Yes. I want to talk about stigmas. You know, the stigma of cancer has been with us for many years. And so, you know, you hear that and your jaw drops and you, you know, horror, you know, I mean, what, what's going to happen and all. Um, and so we have to fight some of those because life has changed and technology has changed and the medical community has changed. So, um, you know, you have to avoid certain things. Um, you know, don't listen to all the people with, you know, certain ideas and stuff. Um, but answer them honestly. Um, you know, you'll figure out how to deal with other people and uh, they'll probably follow what you say. You know, I'm optimistic about my treatments. I've been told, you know, it's going to be two or three years, but it really hasn't spread anywhere else, you know. And so those kinds of things, once you say them and, you know, to the people who care about you, you know, they hear it. Okay. You know, they have their you know, treatment schedule, they know what's happening with them. And uh, just remind friends that cancer should make them afraid to be around you. That's another thing. It's like catchy. Will I catch this? I mean, people have all kinds of crazy notions about things. And um, I remember when my father died of a heart attack and their friends thought that they were might die. Well, the husbands might die of heart attacks. And they really avoided my mom for a long time. So, and that's just, you know, a, a, a spouse thing um, or a heart attack thing. So cancer is one of those things um, and the stigma about it. You know, coworkers might start doubting that you're healthy enough to do your job and right. you might be fine to do your job. Um, but, you know, yeah, again, just stigmas. The things that, right, they come along with that word. That's right. And one thing I want to stress also is that your words and your thoughts become things. Yeah. yeah. Now, I'm a big believer in, you know, what we put out there, we attract and it comes back to us. And it's been like that for many, many years with me. When I start to sulk or feel bad about something, the thoughts are repetitive in your mind and things kind of stay that way. Um, I do know somebody that has a cancer diagnosis now and not one of my clients, a friend, but she she refuses to let that stop her. And she continues her days. She goes for her shot and her treatment when she needs to, but she doesn't talk about it. She meditates every day and she believes she's healthy. Yes. And I think it's really important in your words and your attitude and in your thinking. Yes. Because your thoughts can keep you in a dark place. Absolutely. I know this for sure. Yeah, yeah. So if you can start thinking some happy thoughts and doing some of your same things or giving back to somebody else who may need it a little more at, the, at, at this particular time, all, all of these things are going to help you think 
in a more positive yes. way. Yes. In a more positive light. Yes. So as you're saying, I think one of the topics is really developing your own way to deal with cancer. Everybody's different and everybody's needs are different. So I think that there are just things that we can throw out that might be helpful to people. The journal idea, certainly, so that you can organize your thoughts and your feelings and all. Learning to relax. You talked about meditation. That's so true. Um, you know, when you're faced with a difficult decision, list the pros and cons for each of the choices. And don't worry about hurting a doctor. Go get a second opinion. People say to me, oh, how are they going to feel about me going somewhere else? Forget that. The most important thing is you, okay? It's not the doctor. It's not their ego. It's not, will they get angry with me? Forget that. This is all about you right now and the best treatment for you and what you feel comfortable with, you know, hearing different. I mean, I went, we went to cancer treatment centers in America because I wanted to hear a different kind of philosophy of medicine. And they did have a different philosophy. We went to Johns Hopkins. I wanted to hear on their pancreatic cancer day what they had to say. So be open for, you know, to, to hear other things and to always advocate for yourself. And if you're not able to get someone who can, you know, obviously your family members want to do everything they can for you. And this is a good opportunity for them to advocate for you as well. Um, remain involved with your work and lead your activities as much as you can. That helps you normalize your life so that you still feel like you have other things in your life and that cancer hasn't taken over your entire life. And that's not easy because there's, you know, all kinds of, you know, reactions and things like that. But if you can, um, it will help you, you know, move and, and continue your life. Um, and by the way, be ready to say no. There are times where, you know, you can never say no to anything. This is actually a time to think only about you and focus on you. So no is okay. Don't feel guilty about it. You really have to think about what's right for you. Really important. And right? be gentle. And, and listen, if be it's- Be gentle. If, yes, and be gentle. And if, it's, and if religion, spirituality is what helps you, be, you know, go for it. Very important that you find the things that comfort you and that make you feel, you know, as strong as you can to get through this journey. And it really is a journey. I keep uh, the best for me was that it was like a roller coaster. There were times where it seemed like everything was fine. And then we'd go up the mountain and down this huge hill and everything was not fine anymore. You know, the blood work came back or the scan wasn't good or, you know. I just have to Numbers keep bouncing back and tr and go to the next day and go to the next thing. So just one step at a time and one step at a time. Nice. So, yeah, I hope that this is helpful to people and it is scary and we're not saying it's not. And, the, and you know, there's a lot involved, um, but it is very different from many, many years ago. And thank goodness that medicine and that technology has really moved us in some new places. Um, so, you know, we talked one of our, one of our videos about hope versus, you know, reality and stuff. Everybody finds their, their right place their you know, what's right for them. And they have to figure that out. You know, nobody tells you, okay, this is how I'm going to feel. And this is how it's going to be. They're not going to do that because everybody's different. So you'll find your groove, your new groove, yeah. You yeah. know, and through these support groups too, you will even find like-minded people yes. who yes. are going through the same thing you are. Yes. And it's really nice to have a friend like that, that you can bounce things off of yes. back and forth. So there are plenty of people out there available for, for you for that. Yes. Yes. So uh, I think that's it on my end. Um, hopefully right. that was helpful. I think it was definitely helpful today yeah you yeah. know and and you know i want to mention one of the things that i do is the the story of me book and i had started that the book out it's a four-week project we get together for two about two hours each week four times and it can be on zoom so you can be anywhere in the world or it can be on long island here and i i'll come to you and we do it in person 
But I started out with just terminally ill people because they wanted to leave their stories and memories and experiences for their future generations. And then I had um, people contacting me, seniors, that really just, you know, I don't have a, a diagnosis, but I have stories too. Could you help me create this book for my family? And I did that. And then I would have a few clients that had a diagnosis, just like you who we're talking to today, um, and just wanted to work on a project all along to leave to their family, just in case things didn't turn out the way that they had planned or hoped for. And we did that and we'd work on this project and we'd build something beautiful for the generations that you're never gonna get a chance to meet. And then the person didn't pass with that diagnosis. <laughs> and they were even so, so much more happy that I've done this. I've created this for my family, for my children and grandchildren. So I just wanted to throw that out there because I do talk about my story project a lot with people. And I don't want people to think that it's just if you have a terminal diagnosis yeah. or it's just if you're a senior. My advice is with any kind of diagnosis for anybody. Uh, you know, I'm in my my 50 something. I don't want to tell, you know, I don't like talking age, but I have a world of stories and experiences and things I would love to tell my boys. So it's no matter where you're at. But for especially people that are putting some things in order and want to be a little more organized, it's something to think about. And then when the terminal diagnosis doesn't follow through, well, all the better. You've yes. created a beautiful full project. Yes. So you can find my, that information on eastendulacare.com or even susancaperso.com. You can find out more about that book. And Lisa? Beautiful. Well, we talked about support groups last week. So I just want to mention two. Uh, one is a grief workshop series through Pine Lawn Cemetery and Cope Foundation. And that's October 25th. And that's Rethinking the Holidays After Loss. Uh, people have so much, so many challenges trying to deal with the holidays and um, making them a little happier. So we go through some exercises that will be helpful and activities and it's virtual. So if you um, search Eventbrite, Rethinking the Holidays After Loss, you'd probably find it or just call me at the phone number that's there or email me. And then I have a six week support group, which is really gonna go through November and into December about going through the holidays and the process. And as a group, as we said, to be with other people who understand and have gone through things together and may come up with different ideas and tips um, and some work in between. So um, I'm really looking forward to that. That starts on November uh, 9th and goes through December 14th. Wonderful. All right, Lisa. Well, Hi. I think that was it for today. And I can't wait to see you again next week. And one more thing, anybody who comes up with a topic that they really, you know, that they want us to explore, please write it into our channel or email us or call us because we're really open. We've been doing this more than a year and a half now. We have 70 videos and we're always open to topics that are really about life and death and um, moving on moving forward with life so Sounds okay good. have a good week right, take care see you next week thank yep. you okay bye, bye.